First, I'd, I'd like to congratulate the Corpus Christi graduates of 2016. I'd like to commend you on the hard work and the discipline and especially your zeal to be a Catholic teacher. Thank you and congratulations. A couple of months ago, I was invited to give a talk to, on um, especially my own uh, leadership to some, um, a group of uh, South Pacific Commission technics, technicians. Uh, they say there are some scientists there and potential young managers uh, in the South Pacific Commission. And uh, after I gave my talk, as usual, there, there is time for question and answers. Yeah? So I saw a trend that was coming up because uh, every time someone wanted to ask a question, they began something like this. Uh, well, my, my mother is Catholic, my father is uh, Methodist, uh, but I'm uh, a little bit uh, trying to make a confession. This went on, eh? or some, some would say, my, oh, I went to Catholic school, but... Uh, so after a while I told them, hey, you know, this is a question and answer thing. This is, if you want to go to confession, come, go, come to the church and I'll give you an uh, absolution for your sins. Um, also recently I was uh, visiting a, a non-Catholic school. I heard that there is a Catholic uh, uh, teacher, actually principal in that school. So I went to visit the school and, uh, and he said, well, I know I taught uh, quite a number of years in uh, Holy Cross, some other Catholic school. I thought I'd try a non-Catholic school for a change. Eh? Okay, there, there are some many perspectives to that, uh, to that person's, uh, that teacher's perspective. Uh, one can say, oh, he's uh, doing good work evangelizing in a non-Catholic school. Others might say, think otherwise. But today, graduates, uh, I want to share with you um, and reflect with you the mind of the church not the mind of a person, personal view, but the mind of the Catholic Church and also my own expectations from you as Catholic, uh, graduating to be Catholic teachers and to, ref to, re to reflect with you what the Church has in mind in investing in an institution institutions like Catholic schools and especially Corpus Christi College. And most of these reflections are coming not only from me but from the mind of the church through the Congregation of Catholic Education, which is a special department in the Vatican that takes care of Catholic education. The Catholic education's vision is founded on the structure of divine revelation. And you hear a little bit of that structure in the gospel today, how God and Jesus are one and that Jesus wants to love us in the way that God loved Jesus. And, and that, that uh, the, through the that the unity that, is, uh, that Jesus and God experiences will also be the unity that we experience. So the divine uh, revelation, the structure is that God wants to reveal himself to the world. We come to know God through Jesus. The first Christian community was founded on that the experience of Jesus as revealing the salvation of God. Jesus, who is the anointed of God, reveals to the, the first Christian community who God is 
and the, the, the salvation that God brings about to the world. And so for us, the medium of revelation is Jesus. So that is the uh, very important uh, principle or fundamental uh, of our faith. The second is that then Jesus lives behind, with us a community that we now call church. And so the church then continues the mission of Jesus in revealing God to the world. One of the key instruments or key institutions that help the mission of, this, of the church are our Catholic schools and other Catholic institutions. So Catholic schools are a very important medium in divine revelation because they continue the, the mission of Jesus, revealing Jesus to the world. They continue the mission of Jesus, sorry, the mission of the church in bringing forth the gospel of Jesus. And so our Catholic education and also our Catholic teachers are founded on a very uh, theological base. And that is, it's founded on Christ and it's founded on the church. In other words, Christology and ecclesiology, the study of Jesus and the study of the church are fundamental principles on which Catholic education and the Catholic teacher is founded on. In other words, the Catholic teacher is one that is Christ-centered and also church-centered. The Catholic teacher is one who has Christ at his or her heart and also the church at his or her heart. And this is like the main principles or the fundamentals on which how the church views, understands Catholic education and Catholic teachers. And so based on this, there are a few points that uh, the church makes uh, about Catholic teachers. One, it, it, that the Catholic teacher is a person who is Christ-centered. And rightly so, the school logo has centered in Christ as its motto. And, uh, and therefore, teachers, the Congregation of Catholic Education says these statements, and I want to quote them. Therefore, teachers must be Christ-centered. Catholic teacher testifies to a relationship with Jesus Christ by his or her life. The document continues, may teachers by their life as much as their instructions bear witness to Christ, the unique teacher. Teachers must imitate Christ, the only teacher. They reveal the Christian message not only by word, but also by every gesture of their behavior. And this is what makes the difference between a school whose education is permeated by the Christian spirit and one in which religion is only regarded as an academic subject like any other subject. And so based on these teachings, the, cat, uh, the Catholic teacher is one who is charged with the mission of Jesus and that is to revive reveal God, to reveal divine truth. Catholic teacher is one who communicates truth. And this is very important given the many uh, uh, avenues where one accesses knowledge today. Pope Benedict speaks about the dictatorship of relativism, that truth in the world today is relative. It's up to you. If it's, if it's true by you, that's okay. In other words, there is no universal truth that the whole world can 
look to. So truth is relative, the culture of relativism. And uh, Pope Francis speaks very strongly against uh, the culture of relativism in saying it's a dictatorship. It's, a, you know, like a dictator. So as Catholic teachers, you cannot be riding the wave of the, you know, the, what goes on in the world. Eh? You are a communicator of truth, and more importantly, divine truth that is based on God and his church's teaching over 2,000 years. The Catholic teacher, the second point based on the divine revelation is that the Catholic teacher is one who is who participates fully in the church. So the, the Congregation of Catholic teach, Education says, Catholic teachers should participate simply and actively in the liturgical and sacramental life of the church. Students will share in the, this life more readily when they have concrete ex examples in front of them when they see the importance that this life has for believers, then children that you teach will come, will e more easily believe in what the church teaches. The third point is, the Catholic teacher is not simply a professional person. So the Congregation of Catholic Education says, the Catholic teacher is one who transmits a body of language, a, a, a body of knowledge in the context of a school. A teacher is to be understood as an educator, one who helps form human persons. And so the document adds that, therefore, teachers should love their students. And they show this love in the way they interact with them. When students feel loved, they will love in return. They're becoming loving people. Their questioning, their trust, their critical observations and suggestions for improvement in the classroom and the school will enrich the teachers and also help to facilitate a shared commitment in the formation process. The next point that the document says about Catholic teachers is regarding the witness of faith. The document says Catholic teachers are witnesses of faith. The more concrete and clear the teacher witnesses, the easier will it be for the children to believe what you are teaching. Today you will make that act of faith in front of us, that you will believe what you preach and live what you preach. Your teaching will be seen as something reasonable, worthy of being lived, something concrete and achievable. Pope, uh, Pope, Pope Paul VI, in his document on evangelization of peoples, he says, he says these words very clearly. Modern men and women listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if, if he does listen to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. So Catholic teachers, to be a witness is a very important element of your teaching pedagogy. Finally, the last point that the, the documents on Catholic education seem to em emphasize in all the documents is the synthesis of faith and culture. That as you teach religion, you must creatively in integrate faith, church teaching, the gospel, sacraments, and life. That's a big challenge. That is very important. Uh, all our teachings about our faith are useless if they don't make sense 
to how to life today, to the children's experience, to their experience of the world. In other words, uh, in the modern language of theology today, is that you should be contextual in your teaching of faith and just not be talking from the, what the church teaches or what the Bible teaches, but how they relate to life. It calls for creativity. It calls for attentiveness to the culture of today. Now, it's sad to hear comments that I, as I go around the parishes that uh, you know, some RE classes are spent on singing practice. You know, it's very easy to fill up an RE class with just singing practice. Eh? And those are some very, very lazy teachers. If we find them out, we should take away their teaching, uh, their, their catechist certificate. Please, do not let that happen to you, because that's, that's laziness. That's not creativity. You have, you, today you will receive a certificate on catechesis. And so, the challenge here is how you will integrate faith and culture. The other uh, thing, the other common comment that I'm hearing around is some RE classes are just simply being used for devotions like rosary, adoration, uh, saying the chaplet of the divine mercy. They are not bad, but there are, there are more effective ways of catechesis. You want to teach children their about faith. And for them to get the faith, they have to be taught. They cannot understand faith by simply saying devotional prayers. So again, this calls for creativity and challenge. You are young people, you are full of enthusiasm, use that energy well. So bring the Catholic Catechism to speak to the issues of, time, of the time today. The Catholic Church is probably one of the churches, the, the, I can vouch that it's the, the, amongst the Christian churches that has been, have a, a rich uh, uh, resource of faith through the Catholic Catechism and through the Catholic social teaching and, of course, the Bible. They offer wisdom and guidance about any issue, most of the issues today. So make sure that you have one of these books. If you don't try and get them, they are also available on the internet. So, dear graduates, these points that I highlight that expresses the mind of the Catholic Church and expresses my expectations or our expectations as church, and they make clear one point, and that the ideal school for a Catholic, school, Catholic teacher is a Catholic school. You should love and desire to teach in a Catholic school. And I want to emphasize that because this is the place where you really will put to use your three-year formation and your catechetical certificate that you will receive today. The director of education, Catholic education is present here and I want to ask him to do his best to get our new graduates a posting in a Catholic school, and I seriously mean that, because otherwise, what's the use of Corpus Christi if half of them or more than half end up in non-Catholic schools? We'll really have to question ourselves as an, uh, 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 the, the, the purpose of our institutions. But if you happen to find yourself in a North Catholic school, you can still use your Catholic your catechist certificate in the parish, especially in the new confirmation program, two-year program that we will be launching next year. And you can use your certificate or uh, catechist certificate in that program. Uh, in 2015, I attended the city uh, AGM, and one of the comments on one of the, one of the senior teachers, actually a head teacher, he says that, made this comment, I don't know how true it is, how intensive it is, that some Catholic teachers prefer to teach in non-Catholic schools. Why? Because it's one way of uh, sidestepping the, the parish commitments, avoiding the, the parish soli and stuff like that. 
So I hope that is not true, eh? because if it is, then it's a real question of the character of the graduates that we that we that come out of Corpus Christi. So, dear graduates, uh, some of those comments might be hard coming from me, but uh, they express some of the, the sentiments that go around. But congratulations, I know you on this day that you are ready to enter in the field, in the mission of the church and the mission of Jesus by, through the education system. Today you will receive a certificate to teach religious education, and to be a catechist in other words. You are about to enter into a very honorable mission, a divine mission, the mission of Jesus, the mission of church. And thank you for being uh, and, and, and for choosing to be a Catholic uh, teacher and be proud to be a Catholic teacher. I'd like to end with an invitation to come with me to a third grade classroom in your mind. Eh? And in this classroom, there is a nine-year-old kid sitting at his desk. And all of a sudden, there is a puddle, I mean, there's some liquid between his feet and from his pants that are wet. He thinks his heart is going to stop because he cannot possibly imagine how this has happened. It's never happened before. And he knows that when the boys find out, find out he will never hear the end of it. And when the girls find out, they'll never speak to him again as long as he lives. The boy believes in his heart, uh, sorry, the boy believes his heart is going to stop. He puts his head down and prays this prayer. Dear God, this is an emergency. I need help now. Five minutes from now on, I'm dead meat. He looks up from his prayer and here comes the teacher with a look in her eyes that says he has been discovered. As the teacher is walking toward him, a classmate named Susie is carrying a bowl that is filled with water. And Susie trips in front of the teacher and dumps the bowl of water on the boy's laps. The boy pretends to be angry, but all the while he is saying to himself, thank you, thank you, Lord. <laughs> now all of a sudden, instead of being the ob object of ridicule, the boy is the object of sympathy. The, che the teacher rushes him downstairs and gives him gym shorts to put on while his pants dry out. All the other children are on their hands and knees cleaning up the, around the desk. The sympathy is wonderful, but as life would have it, the ridicule should have been his, has been transferred to Susie. Susie tries to help, but they tell her to get out. You've done enough. Finally, at the end of the day, as they are waiting for the bus, the boy walks over to Susie and whispers, you did that on purpose, didn't you? And Susie whispers, whispers back, I wet my pants once too. <laughs> so may all we see, may we all see the opportunities that are always around us to do good. And this is a message that I want to leave with our graduates, that the teaching provides you a lot of opportunities to be good Catholic evangelizing teachers. And congratulations. God bless you.